We begin this hour with the real world consequences of Donald Trump's attacks. As we've documented, Trump uses social media in his campaign rallies to call out the prosecutors and judges involved in his many legal problems. At, at the start of this week, Judge Juan Merchan expanded the gag order in the criminal his hush money case after Trump repeatedly attacked the judge's daughter. And here's why actions like that need to be taken seriously. This week, a New York man was charged with sending death threats to, uh, to New York Attorney General Letitia James and Judge Arthur Engeron. Tyler Vogel threatened them with death and physical harm if they did not comply with his demands to cease action in the civil fraud case. Former Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn joins us now at the table. Welcome, Harry. Good to have you, brother. Good to see you. Good Thanks, to see you, man. This is, this is the world that Donald Trump has wrought. Um, and I do not understand, I fundamentally do not understand why the American people do not respond better in moments like this, mm -hmm. instead of leaning into or outright ignoring a lot of this hot rhetoric that Donald Trump is spewing that is resulting in death threats. Yeah. You know firsthand, yeah. having lived through January 6th, what that is like. How come from that time to, to this time, it hasn't gotten better? It's gotten worse. Gotten worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's scary. I, I'm trying to figure out the logic behind it, too. Uh, a lot of times, Donald Trump thinks that his words are just just words like, you know, the whole um, uh, when he talked about when he linked it to the auto industry, yeah. his, his comments the blood there, bath. the bloodbath, the bloodbath. Yes. He, he knows what he's doing because the majority of people will sit there and say, no, that that's wrong. But he knows that there's these few mm -hmm. that will do, uh, like you just said, uh, the death threats to Letitia James and the individuals that will take his words literally like they did on January 6th and when they attacked the Capitol that day. Um, there were people there that were peaceful, but there were a lot of people there that were violent. And those are the individuals he's speaking to in a subtle manner, just enough to try just to keep enough it, to just enough, on. exactly. You know, I think about, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, but let's say you win and you yeah. are entering Congress. There are so many Republicans serving right now who will get reelected, who fully are just like January 6th doesn't matter. Yeah. My constituents don't care about it. You all are making such a big deal about it. What do you say to those people are you hearing folks talk about it? Your constituents talk about it? And why do you want to work with people <laughs> who say, that's fully a, are just like odd against moment the reality? To walk yeah. that yes. hall as a member of the Congress after yes. having protected the very people who turned their back. What, on what, you. Well, is it weirder being their co worker or weirder being right. responsible for protecting yeah. them while they're diminishing what you went through? So it's already, I've already been in that situation. We're three years removed from it. And for three years, even after January 6th, I was still responsible for protecting these individuals. Why? because the institutions are worth it. The institutions are worth protecting and they need strong people that will stand up and fight for them. And that's what I plan to do in Congress. But it is very important that we send our best people there that actually believe in it. And like you said, people that denied January 6th, they denied it until Donald Trump started calling those people hostages. So now they're leaning into that rhetoric. So, oh, now January 6th is a big deal, but it's only a big deal because Donald Trump says it is a big deal. I'm so glad right. you brought that up because it is just like the hypocrisy yeah. is incredible to watch them going from January 6th, just a normal tour yeah. in the Capitol. What do you mean to now January 6th, you take our people, yeah, yeah. they're hostages, <laughs> right. release them. Yeah. I mean, it's so much more about just the day of January 6th and what happened. It's about democracy, protecting these institutions, sending good people to serve in these institutions. Yeah. How do you talk to voters about these big, almost not ambiguous, but just kind yeah. of big picture topics that people might roll their eyes at or glaze over? Well, that's the thing. January 6th, like I said, it, the democracy is more than just January 6th. Accountability yeah. serves two purposes. It, 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 people, it, it brings some type of restitution or healing to those that were aggrieved. And also, it provides a deterrent to keep things from happening again. Accountability has not been had, had at the highest level of January 6th yeah. yet. Yes. Right. So there is nothing right. preventing right. January 6th from happening again. Yes. That's, so people, like you said, you asked a question know. about people out in the community. Mm -hmm. Democracy is the bigger, the bigger issue here. It's so many things that are at stake right now. Like we talk about women's reproductive rights and gun safety, lower price health. All that stuff doesn't matter if we have a dictator in the White House that can do whatever he wants to do. So all of those issues that we talk about, that we want, that Democrats are fighting hard for, 
those won't even be an issue if we have a dictator in the White House. I am so glad you said that, Harry, because people talking about the economy and GDP, which like, it this... matters, but yeah, no, it's definitely what, important. What, is, what is GDP being up if a dictator is the president of the United States of America? Absolutely. Yeah. What, is, what is GDP being up if literally a woman can't make a decision about her own body? And again, we're wearing the little red robes and the cream hoods. I'm talking about yes. the handmade sale. Yeah. I just, you, you, you talk about the institutions and uh, the institutions are only as strong as the people who support them. Yeah. Our democracy is only as strong as the people who uh, fight to defend it yeah. and um, who work to defend it. But I, I think about these folks who have tried to stand up to Donald Trump in terms of our systems, like our legal and our judicial system. Yeah. And he's threatening judges. He's threatening um, the, the Judge Marchand's daughter. Um, he is threatening the lawyer. Like, he's he's threatening the president of the United States yeah. of America. He's, th he's, he's literally whipping up this vitriol mm -hmm. that people have acted on. Yeah. And not only that, I mean, sure, but we need our judges, too, to step up. Like, I mean, I appreciate what George Marchand is doing, but even over at the Supreme Court, they, we need more people that are in <laughs> positions of authority to actually hold people accountable to do their jobs, too. It can't just be uh, talking heads on the news or people that are uh, aggrieved about what he's doing. We need people in our authority. Just like you said, the institutions are only as strong as the individuals that are, are serving in them. And we, they have got to do something. And we only, we as a nation, only have ourselves to blame if Donald Trump is elected again. Mm -hmm. Because it feels like those institutions, this, the courts, the people that are responsible, they have been failing us up until this point. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do your fellow officers, and you and I have talked about this uh, before in, in the context of the the impact it has on the men and women that you served with um and and now watching uh several of your 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 fellow officers who said i, I can't do this anymore or have moved on to other things you're taking it stepping into a leadership role running for congress uh, how how does that read to them what what's their takeaway uh, from a campaign like yours yeah. or, you know, even even some of their other fellow officers who've said, you know what, no, Moss, I can't do this anymore. I cannot protect the people who won't protect me. I can appreciate that. You know what? It's, I mean, I consider myself crazy for wanting to join this institution <laughs> of Congress. Like, who, who, who does it, right? Self-awareness is just the element in the world. But it's crazy, though. But, but the overlying message is, we have to do something. Yeah. You know, obviously running for Congress is a, a, a huge step, but people may say, I can't do this anymore. We can't just sit on the sidelines idly by. And that's been my message. We have to do something. Because like I just said, we only have ourselves to blame mm -hmm. if Donald Trump is elected. Well, that, that, there's a lot of truth in that. But I, I, still, I still come back to how the American people process all of this, how they see January 6th. Do you really see these these insurrectionists as hostages are you buying the rhetoric out of donald trump's mouth um when he's out here ta you know referring to uh rebecca lavrez um as j6 praying grandma um as being unfairly targeted by crooked joe biden's doj uh, and now facing up to one year in prison for peacefully walking around the Capitol. America, you do not get arrested for peacefully walking anywhere. Unless, of course, you're black. Then you may have well, another. come on, Mr. Chairman. Come on, Mr. Chairman. But, but, but certainly not on the Capitol steps. So yeah. I, I, that's, that's what we're up against here. That's what you're up against. Um, not just as a candidate for office, but as someone who served the institution, yeah. inside the institution, you still, again, going back to your fellow officers who, who remain there working every day, faithfully um, honoring their oath and commitment yeah. uh, to serve, protect, and defend, right? This is what they're up against. Yeah. Is this kind of crazy nonsense? No pushback against it equals a win for them. That's why we have to continue to speaking out and pushing out, pushing it back and calling out for what it is. BS. Like, that's what it is. And you need people that are continually pushing that. As long as the, the counter narrative is out there, you have to have people that are out there to continue to be truth tellers about what happened that day. And uh, as long as that's still going on, I'm going to continue fighting for it. Every day. Yeah. Every Republicans, day. one quick question. Republicans love to claim that they, you know, care about law and order and police officers. 
Did you have a different view of Republicans and how they viewed police officers and law and order before January 6th? No, nah, that whole back to blue, it, it, that, that's slogan. You've always show, seen. show me, show me through your, your, what you do on a day to day. Yeah. Show me in your voting. Show me how you fund the police and those issues. Show me that way, not just by putting a back to blue hashtag on your Twitter profile. Right. It's like it's, it's way more to it than that. And right. it, it's like one of them things calling themselves patriots. It's, <laughs> it's don't, don't tell me about me. Don't tell me about it. Show me. Hey, everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.